I just want to say thank y'all for having me. Um, I didn't know you were out there. Uh, when I heard about you, uh, my heart did a little, little leap. Um, and I just want to say, boy, if we need anything right now, it's folks who are taking a moment and taking a breath and moving in very intentional ways to, as I heard Mirabai say, find our way uh, to uh, an undivided life or, or as our predecessor has offered. And so I just want to say thank y'all for even being this collective of people, being in this formation. I think this is really quite beautiful. And thank you, Maribai, for your leadership, um, for the vision um, that has been the engine. I, I even heard you excited to see some friends. You got excited and I got excited. Uh, so for all the old friends showing up, I just wanna say um, thank you um, and thanks for all the work. So I teach global environmental politics and what this discipline is about, it's about trying to understand and respond to the kind of ecological and social justice reality we are experiencing today. The, the, the deep injustices that accompany climate change, loss of biological diversity, toxification of our world, and so forth. And if there's a question that sits at the heart of this discipline, it's this, how do we hold this world? How do we hold it personally? How do we sleep at night knowing that these amazing things in the world are happening and amazing horrors? How do we hold it politically? That is to say, how do we respond in a way where we are becoming active citizens and trying to respond and make a difference? And finally, as professors, how do we, or just educators, how do we respond pedagogically? How do we apprentice our students to this world in a way that is both clear-minded or clear-sighted, sober, and, um, and empowering? Studies have affirmed what our experiences have shown us, that engaging in meditation, journaling, yoga, et cetera, spending time in nature, all positively impact us. I maintain that experiencing the arts, whether creating or witnessing, can have a similar effect. And this is especially important for individuals who encounter mildly or intensely hostile environments on a regular basis. These practices and experiences serve as a balm for the soul. They help empower individuals by correcting misinformation and providing models to emulate. They help people connect with what is true for them and, and enable people to live more authentically. We are living in incredibly challenging times. I believe we're being asked to grow up. We're being asked to evolve human consciousness to a place where we honor all beings, sentient and insentient. We're being asked to honor all humans, all animals, birds, fish, plants, trees, the water, the air, the mountains, everything. A way of looking at things that I find helpful is that we are birthing a new world and we're having a very difficult labor. But just as in preparing for labor, women learn how to breathe through the pain, we must engage in practices that help us move through the hard moments until our new world is born. Actually, I believe that not only will these practices help us navigate the challenges, they'll help mitigate the challenges so that our labor is less painful. At the core of community are the individuals that dwell therein. Love of self, love of all beings, love of shared space. Which is why I began the first practice by inviting us to first focus on the self. The self carries great importance, great importance in consideration of the beloved community, as it is the self, once again, that determines participation, depth, and duration. In other words, we can only participate in beloved community if we first and foremost love ourselves. Whew. 
translating this back again into public health speak, specifically social psychological speak, if we operationally define love as social support, if we don't perceive that we have it, if we don't believe that we have it, then we do not receive the health benefits of someone who does perceive that they are socially supported. In other words, what you perceive is your reality. Some of us have been bombarded with narratives so long that it encourages us to believe that we are not worthy to receive support or love for so long that we don't know how to exist in beloved community. We don't see a seat for ourselves. To counteract this destructive narrative, I developed a brief practice that I would like to take us through. This practice is based in large part, in large part, on the Just Like Me exercise developed by Mirabai. And it can be found in her book with Daniel Barbazat entitled Contemplative Practices in Higher Education. I'm almost positive that Mirabai has a copy in her purse. <laughs> or there are copies outside. If we seek to change our surroundings, we must begin by changing ourselves. Only then can we support others in actualizing their own agency and in recognizing themselves as conduits of power. We cannot do this if we are subconsciously hijacked, hijacking our own flow of power, fearing what may arise for us or fearing what others may call up. We can each easily inflict systemic violence without intention. By allowing our own fear to block power in another and redirecting it in ways that are comfortable for us. This perversion of power is all the more harmful in relationships with marginalized people who may have been conditioned to perceive and respond to someone as the ultimate holder and purveyor of power in, in an interaction. It is difficult enough for people who believe they have power to willingly redefine their relationship to it and release some of its trappings. It is even more difficult for people who feel they have very little power to relinquish what little they have. In many ways, integration, growth, and actualization are privileges for people who aren't socialized into fear for the sake of survival. Not everyone has the emotional and physical space to challenge preconceived notions that have kept them alive. Because we live in a society where power is reduced to an object to be owned and wielded, it is important to understand that our social location means that we do not, we cannot enter into social situations with equal power. Therefore, we do not all take equal risks when interacting with either the world or each other. <laughs> <laughs> 